Hello, Fearless. Very great to be here with you and be sharing with you our journey. My name is B3 from Worship Harvest Ministries. I have the privilege of being part of the pastoral team here and also giving oversight to what we call our Oikos department, which is really the space in charge of growing discipleship. So Worship Harvest began in 2006. We were young, excited, and determined to stay connected. And we began our journey to try and figure out discipleship because we knew it was important. When we began, the first thing I remember we did was called Heart Connection. Heart Connection was a place we hung out as friends on Wednesdays, it was actually Tuesday, and we really divided the word, uh, shared scripture, sharpened one another, and that was it. But we felt something was missing. So we grew from what we called Heart Connection to weekly meetings that we called Hangout Groups. These ones focused on what you really like, hobbies, you know, the people who hang out around swimming, hang out around books, hang out around uh, business. Still something was missing, it didn't work. They were very inward focused. And then we began what we called links. Links were more focused within the community. You still hang out once a week around the word of God, uh, mostly shared the word, kept each other accountable around what was happening in your life and growing as a Christian. Still we felt, felt something was not working. We changed what we called the government of 12 system, G12. And there each elder picked on 12 people who were key leaders, raised them as disciples and asked them to raise other leaders. So now we're seeing a bit of reproducing, but again, something was missing. And so in 2012, we chanced upon Mike Brin's materials, which talked about the missional community. And we immediately recognized what was missing in our strategy for discipleship. Our strategy had been very inward focused. While we were reproducing inwardly, we were not going on mission at all, like at all. Maybe you do once a year and go out and maybe paint the zebra crossing in your community or something like that. And we quickly lost so many people when we began missional communities because missional communities now, as you hear the word, we are missional first, that the community was arranged around mission. You came together, studied the word, did life together, looked out for each other. We say that a good missional community prays together, plays together, eats together, grows together and goes on mission together. So what was missing for us was that there was no mission. It was cozy, it was inward focused, the church was staying in and not going out and yet Jesus says to us, go and make disciples of all the nations. Also, our, our discipleship system before was not based in the community. It was just people who had convenience. If you worked in an area, you gathered together, but it wasn't community based. And so when we began the mission of communities, the radical difference is two radical changes. First of all, mission became the center every month. A missional community that's healthy must go on mission and send reports. They find a frontier within their community because now they are best in the community. It's people who live together in the same area, the challenges they are facing, they reach out, they love on people. All sorts of missional community frontiers are happening now. People are reaching out to vulnerable children, educating our children, women, youth clubs, spiritual things. People are giving food. People are, are helping with just helping with mindset change, with finances. We've started circles in communities. Crime rate has reduced. Reached out to places where they have delinquents, juvenile delinquents, ETC. There are as many missional community frontiers as there are missional communities. The two radical differences are, one, there's a focus on mission. Two, it's based on loyalty. You don't only come and keep switching spaces. People are actually raising sons and daughters. We've seen great change. What has happened as a result of changing to the mission or community system? First of all, we now have over 600 mission or communities and growing. Every week that number changes because people are starting mission or communities with ease in their communities. Secondly, we have more than 10,000 people now engaged in mission or communities. Before, we had so few people engaged in discipleship. Now, out of about 15,000 people who call Worship Harvest their home, we have 10,000 actively engaging with a mission or community every single week. And we have ordinary people making disciples. We've also seen that we are now serving frontiers. At least 7,000 people are reached every month with practical love of Jesus Christ. These resources are not brought from the central church. These are the people in the mission or community collect their own resources and go out on mission and make a difference in their communities. We also are seeing at least 500 people giving their lives to Christ every week in worship harvest. 
This used to be our annual number of salvations. It's now weekly because every mission or community is tasked to go out every week and bring at least one soul per mission or community to Christ. And we are seeing it happen. Just this week, we had over 900 mission, 900 salvations in a week from the mission or communities. And they don't just get them born again, but they then absorb them into their mission or communities and disciple them. And we've also seen great commitment. So for us now, we feel like we found a model that works. We completely borrowed it from Mike Brin, including the name mission or communities, and it's working. And so for us right now, that's, that's a model that we are saying works. Why? The two foundations, loyalty and mission. And we feel like people have become wholesome. We are going out on mission together. We are multiplying. We are, we are growing in our character and competences. And that's the journey of discipleship for Worship Harvest. Thank you.